The team is back with another episode of Talkable, Topical Explainers for the third chapter of CAI EA's Love Mathematics. In this video, we'll be discussing all about coordinate geometry and to simplify the topic and provide us with all the information we need, we have Pratish here with us. Hey guys, I'm Pratish and I'm going to be explaining coordinate geometry to you guys, which includes the topics of lines, the midpoint, the length, the gradient, circles, and the tangent to circles. So let's get started. First of all, you should already have completed the previous two chapters because that you'll require some information or concepts from those chapters to effectively do this chapter. You should already know about the uh, geometry plane of x-axis and y-axis, Cartesian geometry. And you should be very comfortable with algebra because this topic has a lot of algebra. So let's get started. The first topic, you should already know about the equation of a straight line in the form y equals mx plus c, where c is the y-intercept and m is the gradient. And this form, which is a, a little bit different to that, but it's just the same thing rearranged if you look carefully. Cambridge likes this form because uh, it equals zero. I think they like that form just because it's everything on one side. And here on this side, we have three diagrams. A line segment is not is bounded by two points. So it has a definite start and end point. So you start point A and point B, and here to here is the line segment. See it has a definite length and it starts and stops. Whereas oh, my bad. Whereas uh, a ray, which we don't really need to know at this point, is start point and it goes through another point, but it keeps going in that direction. So it extends all the way. And a line, which is what we're usually looking at, such as y equals mx plus c. Since you have an infinite domain, you can have any values of x, right? The line could just keep going forever and ever, like, woo, and it'd never stop. OK, what just happened there? OK, I see. <laughs> we will learn how to find the midpoint of a line, or more effectively, more accurately, a line segment, because those have start and end. The gradient of a line, a line can have a gradient, because it doesn't. you don't need a definite start or end point. And the length of a line segment, which is, again, you need a start and end point for that. And you're going to learn how to find the equation of the line given some information, such as either the gradient or the point on a line, x, y, or two points on a line. So let's get started. The first one, how do we find the midpoint of a line? Well, that's actually pretty simple, and it's intuitive if you think about it, too. It, to get the midpoint, you just find the average, see, quotation marks, of their x and y coordinates. So let's look at this example just for now. Uh, Using this, this is the for official formula, right? I'm going to explain to you what that means. So let's take uh, point A as being first point and point B as being the second point, right? So x1, y1 are, are 1 and 5. And let's call x2 and y2 7 and 1. Make sure you match up the right coordinate to the right one. So you could x to the x, y to the y. And you take these values and you add them together. So that's for the x coordinate, we're going to do 1 plus 7, because x1 plus x2, and that divided by 2. So we're getting the average of the x. And that comes out to 4. And for the y value, we're going to do the same for the y. So 5 plus 1, y2 plus y1, or whatever, yeah. And divide that by 2. So 6 or divided by 2, that's 3. So our midpoint coordinates, midpoint, a big M, just to avoid confusion. This midpoint M is 4, 3. It's that simple, guys. And uh, if, if questions will ask you stuff like, what's the point halfway between these two? Or like, what's the perpendicular bisector or something? We'll come back to that. But make sure that you know the wordings for midpoint as well. So now let's look at the gradient. 
as you know, gradient is slope, so m in y equals mx plus c. And you should already know about how positive gradients slope up and negative gradients slope down. So why does it not change back to pen? Silly. OK. Um, can I just change a setting for a second? It's fine. Just pause this. Yeah, sure. Pen settings. Draw. Yes, this should work now. Something. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's continue from here. Okay. As you know, negative gradient slopes down, positive slopes up. Yeah. And you should already know the equation for getting the gradient. It's simply rise over run. So change in y over change in x. How do you do that? Let's look at this question here. Um, point A is 0, 1. Point B is 2, 7. And what's the gradient of this line that's joining them? Well, what's the change in y? The important thing is you always want to have the first coordinates. Line. So what that means here is we want to have, let's, let's do a minus b, OK? Let's say a is x1 and b is x2 or whatever. So let's do rise, OK? So what, what's a, the y of a is 1. And from that, I'm going to subtract the y of b, which is 7. And I'm going to put that over. So that's the rise. And what's the x of e? Zero. And what's that? Minus two. So that becomes six minus six over minus two, which simplifies out to three. Oh, the gradient... oh, huh? yeah, apparently, um, my mouse just did something and I just went back to uh, like my home page. Oh, okay. It's like removed from the reading. Uh, can you re like erase uh everything other than the m there uh-huh sure sure yeah. and then redo that sorry about this <clears throat> it's fine it's fine You can you tell me when you're ready. Yeah, okay. Okay. As you know, the gradient is a slope, and the negative gradient slopes down like that, and positive gradient slopes up like that. So that's positive m, it's negative m. And uh, the equation of a gradient of a line, you should already know. It's change in y over change in x. Or in other words, rise, how far up it goes, divided by run, how left or right it goes. And it's important that you match up the correct coordinates to the correct ones when you're doing the question. So let's call b.2, right, and a.1. So I'm going to subtract a from, uh, I'm, let's say I'm going to subtract b from a. So let's do the y ones first, y of 1, y of a is 1 minus y of b is 7, all right, minus uh, divided by. So that's the rise. That's the change in y divided by run. 0 is the x value of a. 2 is the x value of b. So I'm going to subtract 2. This comes out to minus 6 over minus 2, which simplifies to 3. So the gradient of this line m equals 3. Um, yeah, that's that's what how you get the gradient. And remember, if gradient was negative 3, then it would look the other way. Or if one of the points was negative, you would have to like minus minus 7 or whatever. We'll get to that in the questions later on. For now, just know the equation, rise over run. Pretty simple. OK, the length of a line. This equation will actually come from the Pythagoras theorem. If you look here, I have two points, right? 
let's call these A and B. That's a circle, by the way. And they're on the coordinate plane forming a line segment. And I take this X coordinate and I take this. No, that's my bad. My bad, guys. That's, that's the Y coordinate. Change in Y, change in X. And if I make, since the right angle triangle, this is actually x squared plus y squared equals a b length of a b squared you see that it's a pythagoras triangle so that's what we do here to find the length of a line segment find the length of the line segment shown to the right a to b so again we need to find the difference between two points and square them and then square root them so for point a I'm, for the x values i'm going to do 1 minus 7 squared. I'm going to add that to the, the, these are the x values. Let's find the y values. 5. Remember, I've done 1 first, so I have to put 5 first on the next one. 5 minus um, 5 minus 1 squared. We square root that. So that's six thirty six plus four. Is that a whole number? Minus one square. Yeah, that comes out to two square root thirteen. Which isn't the nicest number, it's somewhere around 7.211. Yeah. And that's the length of this line. Um, so that's the basic concept for length. You just think of Pythagoras, change in x, change in y, square them, and then square root to get the side c. Okay. Here's a question that combines the previous three. Uh, concepts we've just covered. I'm going to do this real quick just to show you guys how these three concepts relate to each other. The diagram above shows a straight line AC, that's here by the way, with the point midpoint B. So this is the midpoint of these two. And BD is perpendicular to AC. Okay, we have... Oh yeah, no, no, no problem. So what this means if it's just it's just a triangle, right, guys? And with, that's that's the height, that's the base, this long one, and we'd need to find the area. How do you do that? First, we need to find the length of the base, which is a to c, and for that, it's simply um, minus two minus six whole square plus you see minus two minus six, and 3 minus 7 whole square, square root whole thing. That's the length of AC, which comes out to 8 square plus 4 square, about 4 root 5. And BD is perpendicular. So now we need the, this, we need this midpoint so we can calculate this height length, right? And the midpoint will be um add, added the average so minus two plus six over two which is two i think yeah two and for the y it's going to be three plus seven three plus seven over two which is five so two five is this point here two five b b is two five and b to d we can get the length again which comes out to seven squared. I'm just simplifying for sake, because two plus five, seven, and five minus, wait, my bad. Oh, I'm adding them. Um, B is two, five. D is five minus one. It's change in X, so two minus five square plus, 5 minus minus 1, you see, like here. When you have minus minus 1, it comes out to positive, so that's like 6 squared 
plus minus three squared. So three squared plus six square square root. So it's so that equals three root five. So if our triangle has base four root five and has height three root five, then its area is half bh, right? So the area is half times three root five times four root five, which comes out to four root five, comes out to 30. So the area of the triangle, 30 units square, whatever, because we have been given units. So there you go. Remember, area is square. So that's how you combine these three ideas of length, gradient. We haven't quite used gradient here, but uh, midpoint and length combined. Another important thing when it comes to gradient is parallel and perpendicular. This is a very popular question. You need to understand this very clearly. And so when you have two lines which have the same gradient, they're parallel. Let's say this line and this line. They're on the xy plane. They might have different intercepts, you see, but they have the same slope and they're parallel, which can be depicted by these two arrows. They'll never intersect because they'll just keep going up at the same slope and never like, because if you have a line at a different slope, then they'll cross at some point eventually, right? Even if it's a very, very faint change, they'll cross. And what perpendicular means is it's at 90 degrees to the other line. So you have one line and you have another line and they form a 90 degree angle. So what, whoa, laser pointer. <laughs> what rule tells you, what rule tells you about these two relations? Well, they're parallel if their gradients are the same, you know that, and they're perpendicular if the products of their gradients is minus one. In other words, if m1 times m2 is minus one, then m1 is minus one divided by m2. So let's say my gradient was two, right? What's the perpendicular gradient to that? Well, it's gonna be, I'm gonna put minus, mm -hmm. What's a perpendicular to two? I'm going to put well, minus one divided by two, which comes out to minus half. So these two are are perpendicular. What the heck? Also, um, uh -huh. like this is actually what my teacher also taught me uh, to actually find a perpendicular uh, slope. What we used to do is just like flip it and mm -hmm. uh, change the sign. Yeah, that's that's a very way, nice way to explain. It. Like you have two, you're gonna put it one over two, right? And you're gonna change the sign boom. Or if you have, let's say, two over three, your gradient, you're gonna flip it, make it three over two, add a minus sign. Or if it's like minus four by three, what's perpendicular to that? Three by four. So you just flip it to positive. Very nice and simple trick. Okay, here it says show that the two lines are perpendicular. How are you going to do that? Find the gradient of line A to B and find the gradient of D to C and show that they multiply to minus one. So for the gradient of A, I can see that another way you can do this is just like one, two, three, four. That's a, not a nice drawing, but that's fine. So you see it goes, goes up by four, one, two, three, four and across by seven. Let's just use the formula because just because. Um, one, no, five, we always do y over x. Five minus one over one minus seven. So four over minus six equals two minus two thirds. That's the gradient of a, B. What's the gradient of D, C? Well, it's 3 minus 6 over 4 minus 6, which comes out to be 
minus 3 over minus 2, which is just 3 over 2. So you see 2, two by minus 2 by 3, 3 by 2, they're flipped and negative. So if you multiply them, minus 2 by 3 times 3 by 2, you're just going just gonna to cancel them. It's going to be minus 1. Hence, perpendicular. Epic. And now we're going to learn how to use the gradient m and a point on the line to find this equation of the line. You can find the equation. What's happening? Can you see this, Vyomish? Yeah. Well, we can just cut this part. It's fine. Yeah, we can uh, just... start from uh, behind the first line. Yeah, I'll just uh, pre pre present that slide again. Yeah, that slide that you were working on with. Okay, share. Okay. Uh, yeah, you okay. would have to go to the other slide. Yeah, this one. Um. So now we're gonna look at straight line equations given the gradient and one point. You can find out the equation of the straight line from just these two pieces of information. And let's call the coordinates x1 and y1. Let's call the gradient m. Then, then our equation is y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Um, you don't need to derive this, I don't think. But it's just useful to know how it works. It's just a change in y over change the gradient times the change in x. It's not necessary to know that. But let's find the equation of the line which passes through a point and has a gradient. So you know you're given a point and a gradient. You know you're going to use this equation. So how do we do this? So y minus y1, which is 4, 4, equals m is minus 5, so minus 5, times x minus x1, which is 2, so minus 2. Now we're going to simplify this into the form we choose. So I'm going to make y minus 4 equals minus 5x plus 10. y, I'm going to move the 4 over, minus 5x, that's a 10 by the way, my bad. Um, 10 plus 4, 14. So that's the equation of our line, which has this gradient, as you can see here, m, and it passes through the point 2, 4. If you substitute it in, then it'll be true. And just continuing from that, if we're given two points, you can basically use the same method. You can first find, let's say you're given two points, you can first find the gradient of the line that goes through those two points and use one of the points then to find the equation of the line. So here's what that means. You can, so you remember gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, if you substitute that instead of m here, you'll get x minus x1 equals y minus y1. And it gets a bit messy, looks like that. But you can simplify it a bit. Um, I'd recommend you just get the gradient separately and then plug it in, because that makes the work simpler. Less chance for confusion, but there is a strategy where you can you see multiply these by we don't you can't do that where you can cross multiply this and make it like y1 over something but i don't like that method you can search it up if you want um so let's do this question find the equation of the line joining points minus three and that first thing we're going to find the gradient between them i'm going to do this 
minus this because I like that. I, I, you can do it. You could have done this minus this instead. You'd get the same gradient. So remember, you start with the y minus three minus fifteen over the x two minus minus three. This means plus. Remember, so that equals minus eighteen over two five. So our gradient is minus 18 over 5. That's our m. And now we're going to put that into one of these equations. So I'm going to do y minus, I'm going to use this one. y minus minus 3 equals gradient 18 over 5 times uh, x minus x2, x minus x1, which is Simplify that out. Y plus 3 equals minus 18 over 5x minus plus, actually. That's not going to be 18 over 5. This is going to be 36 over 5. And you can then put that into Y equals minus 18 over 5x plus that times 3 over 5 plus 3. Add 3 to that side. 51 over 5. Well, it works, but this isn't the nicest nicest formula. I mean, it's, it's a line. Here you go. That's the equation of the line which passes through these points. You can substitute in either of the points to check. Yeah, you, you can check. I'm just going to check this really. It doesn't look right. Times 2 plus 51 over 5. Nope, it's it's right. It's right. That's just what the line is. Quite an odd line. Okay. So let's get started with the questions. Vilmesh will help us with the question here. And this will just be about lines in general. Please try to do the questions by yourself as you're watching the video before we do the solutions. It's good to practice a bit. So let's start. Sure. So um, in this question, it shows that we have two uh, points, A and B, and we have to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. So basically, what per the perpendicular bisector is it's a line that is perpendicular in the midpoint of A and B. So in that case, um, first of all, the first step I would do is find the midpoint of the line AB. So knowing the midpoint formula, it's going to be, for the x value, it's going to be 5 plus 10 divided by 2. 5 plus 10 over 2. And for the y value, it would be 2 minus, plus minus 1. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. Um, it divided by 2. So that would give us uh, 15 upon 2 and 1 upon 2 as our midpoint. Yeah. And now what we have to do is first of all find the gradient of AB. So later we could find the perpendicular uh, gradient. So for the gradient of M AB, it's uh, going to be Y2 minus Y1, which is minus 1 minus 2. Minus 1, minus 2. Divided by uh, x2 and uh, minus x1, which will be 10 minus 5. 10 minus 5. Yeah. And that will give us negative 3 divided by um, 5. And then again, uh, remembering what we used to do before uh, to find the gradient that is perpendicular, we flip it and we uh, change the sign. So it's just going to be 5 upon 3. So now we've gotten two things. One is the gradient and the other is the point that it goes through. We can mm -hmm. use the old formula uh, or you could also uh, come up with your own, which is uh, basically in the form of y equals to mx plus c. We could put in the value of m there and we could put on the values of x and y with the point and just have to find it for c. So we could also try that method to have a different method too, which others might also like. 
So let's just write y equals to um, 5 upon 3x plus c. x plus c. And in this case, we're just going to put the values of y, which is 1 upon 2. 1 upon 2 uh -huh. equals 2. And 5 upon 3 times 15 upon 2. Plus c. So in this case, we have to just basically calculate for c, and that will give us the answer. And uh, so smart. in this case, it's going to be... Uh, I don't have a calculator with me. Can you calculate 15. that out? 5 upon 3 times 15 upon 2 gives us 25 upon 2 is a half plus c e plus c so basically 25 upon 2 we just go to the other side 20, yeah 25 upon 2 that gives so us it minus c 12. equals to 12 right minus 12 yeah minus 12. Okay, then. why am i writing 13 where is this <laughs> minus 12 there you go great so the final equation of the perpendicular bisector would be uh, would be y equals to five upon three x minus twelve. X minus twelve. Boom. Let's also try to recheck it by entering one of the like entering the midpoint into this. Yeah, if you enter the midpoint into that value, you should get correct values. So five over three it? times the value of x, which is 15 over 2, uh, minus 12, does indeed give us 1 half. Plug in this, you'll get out this, which is correct. That's great, then. Awesome. Let's check the mark scheme on this. And would you look at that? Uh, this form, any correct version, as you see, first you have to find the midpoint, 1 mark. Then you have to find the gradient and the perpendicular, 1 mark. And you need your final answer in one of these forms. In any form is fine as long as it's like a recognizable form. So awesome. I will do this question and then Vyomish, you can do the next one. All right. Sure. The coordinates of point A, B, and C are bup, bada, bada, bup, bup, where P is a constant. Given that AC and BC are equal in length, find the fraction P. Hmm. Do you know what that means, guys? <laughs> it's always nice to draw a little diagram, even if you don't know what, what, if you don't know the exact, it doesn't have to be exact, it's just to show the lengths here. I'm going to call this A, B, C. A, C is equal in length to B, C. So these two are equal. Find the value of the fraction P. So let's get the length of A, C and equate it to B, C. A, C equals B, C. So what's the length of AC? Well, use the length formula. Big, uh, big square root. Um, five. See, that's the value of A minus minus 2P square plus uh, minus 2 minus P square. All right. That's the length of AC. I'm going to make that equal to the length of BC, which is same format. B, I'm going to do 10 square. No, no, square goes outside, remember. 10 minus 2P whole square. Mine plus, remember this is a plus, guys. It's like A square plus B square. Um, 3 minus P whole square, because the 3 comes from here, P comes from here. So what do we have here? We have two square roots, right? We can cancel out the square roots. We can just square both sides to get 5 minus 2p whole square plus minus 2 minus p whole square equals 10 minus 2p whole square plus 3 minus p whole square. So all we've done is use the length formula to get the lengths of these two lines, equated them. And now what does this look like? It looks like a very large um, quadratic equation, which as you've learned in the first chapter, you can solve. So let's do a bit of algebra. This is, this is a light bit of algebra, guys. It's not, it, gets, it only gets more algebraic from here on. So five square 25 minus five times two, 10. So minus 20p plus four p squared plus two square is 
4 minus 4, no, plus 4p, 4p minus p square, plus p equals, my bad, equals 100 minus 4 times 100 minus 400p, well, plus 4, not 400, 4 well, what did you mean 40p? Yeah, yeah, it is. 40p plus 4p square. Oh my gosh, running out of space. 9 minus 3 times 2, 6p plus p square. So I'm going to cross out the p squares from both sides. Um, I'm going to cross out the 4p's from both sides. And then I'm going to clean it up a bit. So minus 20p plus 4p. That's going to minus 16p plus 4 minus 25 plus 29 equals 100 plus 9, 109 minus 40p plus, no, minus 6p minus 46p. And let's bring all the p's over to this side. So 16 minus 16 plus 46. 30p, 30p, and I'm going to bring a 29 over to the other side, so 109 minus 29 equals 80. Henceforth, p equals 80 divided by 30, and p equals 8 by 3. That is our value of p. And we didn't actually have to do a quadratic equation because the quadratics canceled out. So awesome, we have value of p. It says fraction p, so we're on the right line because it is fraction. Okay, so let's look at the mark scheme. Yes, indeed, it says to form this e equation. Simplify it out. And p equals that. So, awesome, we did the right thing. Okay, Yomesh, please guide us through this question now. Sure, so uh, it says the coordinates of points a, b, and c are as follows, uh, where P is a constant, it's not given that AC is perpendicular to BC and P is an integer. So I guess uh, this is just like a follow-up question from the last question, right? Mm -hmm. And it says um, AC is perpendicular to BC. So what we can do is that we can actually form uh, two equations for the gradients of uh, both uh, AC and BC. So again, it's just y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 for the gradient. And we're saying that both of them, when we multiply both of them, it should be equal to negative 1, as I said before. So to find the gradient of AC, it would be uh, basically um, 2p minus 5. Wait, sorry, uh, p minus minus 2 divided by 2p minus five, right? Uh, and then if we look at the gradient of BC, it's gonna be, um, uh, let's see, BC would be uh, P minus 10. And uh, wait, uh, sorry, uh, P minus three, sorry. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Worse p minus 3 and 2p minus 10. Yeah. Yep. And so what we said before was that when we multiply both of them together, it should be equal to negative 1. So let's also form that equation. So gradient plus, of BC times mm -hmm. gradient of AC should equal minus 1. So I'm going to substitute yeah. these p plus 2 over 2p minus 5 times p minus 3 over p minus 10 boom yeah and so now uh it's basic multiplication so it'll be p plus 2 times p minus 3 divided by 2p minus 5 times 2p minus 10 in one fraction what what i would do here is i would like bring this one to the other side and then just cross multiply oh yeah, you could also do that yeah we could also do that method. So it's just going to be uh, p plus 2 upon 2, p minus 5 equals to, um, again, when it, it's getting multiplied right now, right? So when it goes to the other side, it's going to get flipped. 
And the Chinese, the all, cha- uh, there's also going to be a change in sign. Sign, Because yeah. of the negative the one. sign in front here. Yeah, so it's going to be 2p minus 10 divided by p minus 3. And remember, it's negative because this sign here. Yeah. And so now we cross multiply. So it's just going to be uh, p, p plus 2 times uh, negative, oh wait, 3 minus p. Because there's a negative sign there, right? So. Yeah, let's, let's first get rid of the negative sign. p plus 2. 2p minus 5 equals 10. Minus so 2p. So positive 10 minus 2p over 3 minus p. Yeah, now we can cross it makes multiply. it much more simpler. So, uh, and on the other side, we could just write p plus okay. 2 times 3 minus p equals 2p minus 5 times 10 minus 2p. I'm just going to switch pen color here so it doesn't get confusing. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. So now we can multiply. Then we just expand. Simple as that. Uh, it's just going to be, uh, let's see, 3p minus p square plus 6 minus 2p equals to 20p. Minus four p square. Oh, plus minus four p square. Oh no, minus three. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Uh, minus minus 50. minus fifty. And then plus ten p. Plus. Tw- ten p. Yeah. So now we uh, can't exactly cancel out like previously uh, what Pratish did. So let's put all of them in one side. So I'm going to take the 4p square. I'm going to take it to the other side. And it's going to be 4p square minus p square. So that's going to be 3p square. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to write 3. Right. And on the left-hand side, it's uh, if we look at the p's, right, it's going to be 3p minus 2p. And then on the right-hand side, there is one 10p. So we can take the 10p and put it on the other side. On the left hand side. So um, it's going to be the 3... 20p. Oh, also the 20p, right? So 20p plus 10p give 30p. So, so it's just going to be uh, 3p minus 2p minus 30p, which is going to be me- negative 29p. Yes. Let me just check. 3p minus 2p, that's 1p. 1p minus 30p, that's negative 29p. And now if you look at the constants, on the left-hand side, we have 6, while on the right-hand side, we have minus 50, right? And so that minus 50, when it go to the other side, it would just turn into plus 50. So it's just going to be 50 plus 56. And, and then on the right-hand side, we have nothing left. So it's going to be zero. Simple. Awesome. Yay. And now we just have to now. calculate for the P. Uh, that should be uh-huh. simple, straightforward. You can use a factorizing method or a quadratic method or whatever you choose. Just to make it quicker, we're just going to use the calculator method. Exactly. So what x minus 7 and 3x minus 8. By the way, if zero. anyone has seen uh, the quadratics video, we have talked about this method on while of using the calculator to solve quadratic equations. But remember to uh, put a step in between to show that yeah, sure you you're use factorizing or something. Definitely. And now uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have to, P is an integer though. So mm-hmm. remember that, that's a key point because here there are actually two values of P that uh, we can write. But um, the only value that we can uh, consider would be p equals to seven, as that is the only integer in here. Hence, so that would be our final answer. Also. Yes, if you look at the mark scheme, yes, indeed. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, it seems we did make an uh, error somewhere. S- sm- somewhere. You want to redo this question? 
Um, sure. I can make it quick. I can make it yeah. quick. We just gotta erase the entire board. That's it. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so here, um, let me just read out the question. The coordinates of points A, B, and C are thus as follows, and P is a constant. It's now given that instead that AC is perpendicular to BC, and P is an integer. So um, the first step would be to first of all, find, if we're talking about perpendicular, right? we're talking about the gradient, okay? The multiplication of both of the gradients of AC and BC is going to be equal to negative 1. Right, And so now we have to calculate M1 and M2 in this case, which is AC and BC gradients. So the gradient of AC is going to be, um, the points of AC is, uh, let's see, it's going to be, um, let's say, uh, P minus minus 2. Right? And then it's going to be divided by 2P minus 5. Right? Yeah. And then for the other gradient, that is BC, it's going to be um, uh, P minus 3 divided by 2P minus 10. So there we have it. We have two equations now. We could also simplify the AC one to be P plus 2 upon 2P minus 5 to just simplify uh, the, the signs. Oh my gosh. Plus, there you go. Yeah, there we go. And so now we are going to write in another equation that P plus 2 divided by 2P minus 5 times P minus 3 divided by 2P minus 10 equals to negative 1. So my method of doing this would be to uh, multiplying the numerators by the numerator and the denominator by the denominator. So that would just be uh, p plus 2 times p minus 3 divided by 2p minus 5 times 2p minus 10. Right, it's just equals to negative 1. It's now one fraction that later on when we simplify, we could take the denominator to the other side and then solve like that. So uh, it's just going to be equal to p squared um, plus p uh, minus 6, right? Divided by 4p squared minus 20p uh, minus 10p and then plus 50. Uh, there's also a minus 10p there. Yeah. Okay. And then that would be equal to negative 1. And uh, the denominator would actually turn into 4p squared minus 30p plus 50, right? And so we could take that to the other side and multiply that by negative 1. So the one equation that we'd get would be p squared plus p minus 6. equals to um, minus 4p square plus 30p and then minus 50. Right? The p, uh, four, minus 4p four square in this case could go to the left hand side, so that would be equal to 5p square. And then the 30p could go on the other side and that's just going to subtract, so it's going to be minus 29p. And then the fifth negative 50 on the right side would go to the other side to be plus. So that would be equal to plus uh, 44 equals to zero. So now we can use the calculator method. But again, don't use the calculator method directly. If you looked at our quadratics video, we have used this method to quickly solve quadratics. But make another additional step to write fraction. Uh, you know, the frac uh, factors. Fractions, sorry, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, uh, wait. The answer is imaginary? Oh, the answer is imaginary. 
Wait, wait. Did we do something wrong again? We did do something wrong. It's a minus, minus 30. 31. Can we go back? Uh-huh. Minus 30. Bring to other side. Positive 30? What? Uh... It's cool. Where? Wait, can you go back uh, to the market? Where did it go? Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you go back now? Uh, it disappeared. It disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's weird. Oh, it's here now. What? Oh, it's here. <laughs> Let's actually see our sense. issue. It's, I guess, the minus P there. That's what was different. Uh, th this should have been a... Where's my pen? Yeah, this should have been a minus P. Mm. So let's, instead of redoing the question, let's just put our correction here. This would have been a minus P. Um, the, henceforth. This would have been this minus, would have been a minus uh, P, 31. Minus 31. And that would mm. have given us our answer. Yeah, of because then we would have gone P final. equals 4 or P equals 11 over 5. And since, remember, P is an integer, P has to be 4. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, basically, P plus 2 times P minus 3, right? That would be mm -hmm. 3P minus 2 plus 2P. So that's like minus P. So that's where a mistake was. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. At least we found the error now. So in this case, okay. P would be equal to 4. Yes, P. I guess we can just put in the corrected one in the video, right? Yeah, that's fine. So. Yeah, people are smart, they're good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, why are there so many or marks wait, on this? Do you still think that we should do it again? Like, it's going to take like 5-ish minutes. I think like it would be more consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E. Okay. Sure. Let's okay. Go. Looking at yeah. So looking at the question, uh, it's saying that the coordinates of points A, B, and C are as follows, and where P is a constant, it's not given. Instead, that AC is perpendicular to BC and P is an integer. So if it is talking about perpendicular, we're talking about gradients. What the hell? Where did that come from? <laughs> Oh my gosh, what's <laughs> happening? Okay. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's removed, right? No. Hmm? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, I'm going to just close the slides and open them again, one sec. Okay. I'm using a school drawing pad, so it's like, kind of scuffed. What's, what's happening? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I want to sneeze, but I can't sneeze. It's so weird. <laughs> um, present. Share screen. That one. Yes. There we go. Okay, I'm going to start now. So looking at this question, uh, the coordinates of points A, B, and C are as follows, where P is a constant. So it's given to us that AC is perpendicular to BC and P is an integer. So if we're talking about it being perpendicular, right? We're saying that the gradient multiplied to be negative one, right? So we're talking about the gradient of AC and BC. So to find the gradient of both of them, um, we just do uh, like, if we're talking about the gradient of AC, it's just gonna be Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1 which would be P minus negative two divided by two P minus five. And if we are talking about the gradient of BC, it's just gonna be um, P minus three divided by two P minus 10, right? It's, tr it's simple, straightforward. So what we're saying is that when we multiply them together, right, uh, it should be negative one. So let's uh, do that. So it'll be P plus two divided by two P minus five. 
uh, times p minus 3 divided by 2p minus 10. So on the left-hand side, we're just going to turn that into one fraction. Right? So um, we're basically multiplying uh, both of them, right? So uh, on the top, it's just going to be uh, p, two, p plus 2 times p minus 3 divided by 2p minus 5 times 2p minus 10 equals negative 1. Right? Simple, straightforward. Now what we do is this. On the top, it's just going to be p squared uh, minus p and then minus 6. divided by 4p squared minus 20p minus 10p and then plus 50 equals to negative 1. So now what we can do is that we could take the denominator and put it on the right hand side and multiply that by negative 1, right? So that uh, on the left hand side, it's just going to be p squared minus p minus 6. And on the right hand side, it's going to be minus 4p. Let's just put uh, the negative 1 on the outside, maybe, to simplify. Oh, yeah, yeah. Negative 1 square. 4p Sounds square uh, minus 30. Mm -mm. And then plus 50. Thir minus 30p. And then uh, plus 50. There we go. So it's just gonna, we're just gonna simplify, simplify this. It's gonna be p squared minus p minus 6. What? Yeah? 5p? What? 5p squared? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, like, I was like saying that another step, but that also works because on the right hand side, it's gonna be minus 4, minus 4p, right? So when that goes to the left-hand side, it's going to turn into 5p squared, right? Yeah. And if we're talking about the minus 30p, that's going to turn into plus 30p. And so that plus 30p would do turn into negative when it goes to the left-hand side. So it's going to be minus 31p. Oh, wait. Yeah, minus 31p. And then that uh, negative 50 on the right-hand side, would go to the left-hand side and turn into plus. So it's going to be 44, plus 44. Okay, if you wanted, you zero. could have done the you could do the extra step, multiply out the minus 1, 30p, minus 50, and then dragged it over. But yeah, yeah, we yeah. just did this. Zero. We just did a dark step there. Uh-huh. So if we try to check the... Um, so again, there there is a method of using the calculator to find p, but remember, if you're gonna use the calculator method, you should show evidence that oh you factorized it. So that if you you want to show that you factorize, you want to do x minus four because I got answer of x is four, and x is eleven by five, so. I'm going to put 5x minus 11 equals 0. So oh, in this my, case... That's p, not x. Yeah. So in this case, uh, again, we look back to the question, what is it asking us, right? It's asking us that p is an integer. So what are the values of p that we can get? That is p equals to 4 and 11 upon 5. But we're going to completely ignore 11 upon 5 and just go straight away for the p equals to 4. And there we go. Fourth. We have our answer. p indeed does equal to 4, as you see here. So first step, get the gradients, multiply them to equal minus 1, show some working, and get the answer. OK. I'm going to speed through this question, because that's a lot of marks. X, the line with gradient minus 2 passing to the point that intersects the x-axis at A and the y-axis at B. OK. X-axis intersection means 
this is the x-axis for guys. This is intersects y-axis at B, x-axis at A. That's what it looks like, sort of. Minus 2, m equals minus 2. Find the area of triangle AOB. O is usually the origin, I believe. Yeah, so origin is here, O. Find the area of that triangle. Line with gradient, blah, blah, blah. In terms of T. So what you need for a triangle, let's call this A, B, C. You need the height, right, that length. You need the uh, width, you need height, base, and then half BH. So this question is actually super simple because the lines are straight. There's no slight curve to them like you have to MX plus C. So from the origin, right? From the origin to point A, how much length is that? Well, from A to, oh no, unfortunately we have not been given that yet. So we need to find the equation of the line. So what's the equation of the line given a point and given a gradient? Well, y minus, I'm going to just use this method because that's 2t equals minus 2m, right? x minus 3t, get that minus 2x plus 6t equals y minus equals y minus 2t. y is equal to minus 2x plus 8t. So our um, y-intercept is actually plus c here, which is t, 8t. This is 0, by the way, 0, 0. And what's the a-intercept? That's where x equals zero, y equals 0. If y equals 0, then 0 equals minus 2x plus 8t, uh -huh. and minus 8t equals minus 2x, x equals 8 over 2t, which is 40. So here it's 40, 0. No, 0, yeah, 40, 0. This is 0, 8t. So let's draw that a bit nicely here. You've got b is equal to 0, 8t, origin is equal to 0, 0, and a is equal to 4t, 0. What's the area of this? Well, what's the change in x? There's no change in y. So we're just looking at a change in x. That's the length. So length is 4t here, and change in y, no change in x, 8t length. Side, side length 4t and 8t. So half times base, which is 40 times 4 by the way, t. And times 8t is 16t squared. That is the area of this triangle in terms of t. Uh, oh wait. And we still have the other question midpoint of P to C. Where's C, it asks? Intersects line perpend through P. Perpendicular to AB intersects the line x-axis at C. One second. Eh? Does someone have the marks you want it? Um, show that the midpoint of PC lies on the line y equals x. Does that mean? It means if you have a line y equals x, change color. Um, I'm just going to erase this, actually. Boom. Here we already have that. 16t square. Line through P, perpendicular to AB. What is the gradient of AB? Well, it was minus 2, isn't it? So the perpendicular would be 1 over 2. Flip it, change sign. And show that the midpoint of PC, where's PC? goes through C, x-axis at C. OK.
point P lies somewhere on this graph. Let's line through P perpendicular to AB. Show that it lies on the line. So it's we're already given what line it is. So we just need to show that the line through P goes through P, has it has line goes through this, has a gradient of this. And let's just show that real quick then. Intersects the x axis. Let's see. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's let's do Gomez's method. So y equals mx plus c. Y is equal to two t equals three. You know, we know the gradient. Hold up. Half times it's half times three t plus c. So three over two t equals two t plus c. Um, 2t plus t, what do we get? c equals to 0.5t. Mm -hmm. Show the midpoint of p to c. X. So when x equals to 0, so okay. Our, so our line is y equals half x plus 0.5t. And when x equals 0, y is equal to 0 times half plus half a t. So y is equal to half a t. So if x equals y, then on the line. Oh, it's talking about the x intercept. Oh, y is equal. My, 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 thank you. Thank you. Skill issue. Okay, yeah. So here's our equation of the line. And it says x intersects the x axis. So what that means is boom, here. So y equals 0. If y equals 0, then 0 equals half x plus half. I'm just going to write half t. And if half x equals half t, then minus half t equals half x. Hence, minus t equals x. So that means y equals x. Um, is that right, Vyamesh? Uh, I think uh, you already got the line, right? You don't need to do yeah. much after that. You just need to... Uh, you already found the C point, right? Which is uh, yeah. X equals to negative T. And when if you have that, then you just you have point P and you have point C. C is basically uh, 0, comma, negative T. Yeah. Like the x value is 0 and the y value is negative t. And then what you do after that is that um, you find the midpoint of p and c because you got both of the points. And then okay. you have to, and after that, if you see that the value of x is the same as the value of y, we know that it lies on the point, uh, on the line y equals to x. So point c is this, point p is that, midpoint of these two. Yeah, my brain is not working today. 2t over 2, 2t over 2, 2t over 2. So t, t is the midpoint of C and P. Henceforth, t, t is on the line x equals y because, hey, guess what? x value is equal to y value. Okay, so what, let's, as a quick recap, we got the line using the perpendicular thing. We that we got the line which crosses through P, which and is mid 
got the line which passes through P and is perpendicular to that previous line. Then we got the value of C, which is at the x equals zero point here. And finally, we use the midpoint to make a say midpoint of PC. And we got these coordinates, midpoint. And then we said they are on the line x equals y. OK. My gosh. OK, last line question. Thank goodness. I may have included a bit too many. OK, Vyomish, can you do the first line, this here for us, please? Sure. Uh, so here they're saying that there are two points that have the coordinates a and b as follows. Uh, we'll find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a, b. I said before, yeah. the perpendicular bisector is basically the um, line that is perpendicular and passes through the midpoint of a and b, right? And so the number one thing I would do is, first of all, find uh, the gradient of a, b. Mm -hmm. So uh, the gradient of a, b would be uh, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, which is minus 1. Minus one. Uh, minus one minus seven divided by nine minus five, which would give us uh, minus eight divided by four, which would give us a gradient of minus two. And if, uh, if we're talking about the uh, a gradient that is perpendicular to that, right? Again, we do the same as uh, we do the way that we flip it and then change the sign. So the new gradient would be one upon two. And now we have to find the midpoint because we've gotten the gradient, right? We have to find the point that the line passes through. So the midpoint of both of the lines is, we're just gonna follow the formula. So it's gonna be five plus nine divided by two, comma, uh, seven minus one divided by two. We're basically adding the values. So um the midpoint would be seven comma three uh -huh. and there we go so now to find the equation of the line uh we've gotten the gradient we've gotten the point so we could go with the other method of doing it too uh so it's just gonna be like y minus uh three. Oh, okay uh equals to m uh we know what's m, right? So it's one upon two times uh, x minus uh, seven. And then we're just gonna expand brackets by minus three equals to one upon two x minus seven upon two. And so y equals to one upon two x. Let me just see, minus seven upon two is three minus 3.5. So it'd be minus one upon two, right? Uh -huh. I think that makes sense. Yeah. And so that would be our equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. Simple. Now, if well, we look at, yeah, we could also test it if we want. Um, we've got on the midpoint, which is 7, 3. So we should just go directly in. So does 3 equals half times 7 minus half? Yes, it should. 7 divided by 2, which is basically 3.5. And 3.5 3 minus, minus 3.5 is 3. Exactly. exactly. So that works. Yeah. And now we're talking uh, about, now going to the next question, the line through uh, C parallel to AB meets the perpendicular bisector of AB at the point X. Right? So we know that the gradient of AB is negative 1, right? Let's keep that in mind. And it's saying that the line through C is parallel to AB. So it has the same gradient. So we have gotten the gradient, which is negative two. Okay. We've also got another point that is uh, point C. And we have to be, and we need to find the intersection point um, of the perpendicular bisector that's given by the previous question and the um, new line, right? And then after, like, we'd get the point x, and it's saying that we have to find the distance bx. We can do that easily. It's, it shouldn't be an issue. So first of all, well, let's create the line that goes through c and is parallel to ab. OK, yeah, yeah. Right? So um, let's just go with uh, the method that we used to do for 5, 1. Uh, we're just going to do y minus 2. 
equals to uh, negative two brackets x minus one. And we're just going to expand that. So it's going to be y minus two equals to negative two x plus two. So it's going to be y equals to negative 2x plus 4. There we go. So that's the equation, uh, one of the new line equations. And we're going to look at the other equation that we have gotten, which is y, which is the perpendicular bisector, uh, where y equals to 1 upon 2x minus half, right? Again, these are simultaneous equations that we're solving. If we're trying to find the intersection point, we're trying to solve these simultaneous equations. So one thing I have in mind is this. If we're seeing that y equals to minus 2x plus 4 and y equals to half x minus half, we could say that the y equals to y, right? Simple as that. So it's just going to be minus 2x plus 4. Oh, yeah. Minus half minus. x minus half yeah. equals to minus 2x plus 4. Right? Yes. Simple as that. So now we arrange this stuff. So minus 2x would go to the left. So it would be 5 upon 2. Uh, then the half would go to the right. 10 sign, so it would be plus, so it would be um, 9 upon 2 equals to, yeah, minus 9 upon 2 equals to 0, we oh, can also do I'll that. that. 5. So, uh, uh, equals plus. to 9 upon 2, so it would be um, x equals to 9 upon 5. Simple. So that's the, that we're, this is point x. We found the value of x in the point of x, which is 9 upon 5. And now we have to find the y value, right? So in this yep. case, again, we're solving a simultaneous equation. So we could put either of the equations. So let's just put in the easier one, which is minus 2x plus 4. So let's put the value of x uh, in there. So minus 2 times 9 upon 5 plus 4. So Pratish can calculate that for me. Yes, <laughs> sir. Plus 4. 2 over 5. Two or five, right? That's great. Uh -huh. So now we could put, uh, show that the point X, the coordinate point X has, uh, is uh, 9 upon 5, comma 2 upon 5. Right? And now, that's not the question, though. The question is to find the distance BX. Remember, always look at the question. You don't want to miss that out. The distance BX, we're talking about that, right? We've gotten the point B. We've gotten the point X. We use the distance formula, which is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Square root, that entire thing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, y minus 1. That would be, yeah, minus 1 minus 2 upon 5 square. And then and square, square root, that. the entire thing. Let me type that into my calculator. Also, Remember by the way, this is some extra information, but if we're talking about distance BX, right, and if we want to show uh, what we're talking about, we can do BX and then put a modulus, so like two straight lines on the left and the right to find the distance. It's like easier to uh, show. This is going to be like one straight line, BX, and then oh, the yeah. other straight line for the modulus. Like BX... Boom. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, like the magnitude of bx, basically. Essentially, like how, yeah. Yeah. That equals 7.33. Three. I'm going to have 3 sf here. That's the distance. Okay, I think that should work. Let's check uh, the answers. Yes, sir. <laughs> First oh, try. Hey, that works. <laughs> that works. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, yes, our equation was this. They've just we written it in a different point. form. Yeah. Let me just check. Minus 7 upon 4, that's minus 3. Okay, that works. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And then since we got that correct, we carried that forward. Da da da. Length of bx, co coordinates of x, equation of simultaneous, and the answer. Awesome. Okay, we are now moving on to. The actually new stuff in this chapter, circles. This, um, I'd love to show you on Desmos, but it'll be a bit difficult. Desmos.com is a great calculator, Desmos. Search that up. It's a, like a graphing calculator, so you can type in equations and stuff. And the way circles work is they come from the distance formula. 
So what is a circle? It's a point, and then the set of all points equidist. Oh my gosh, that's the worst circle I've drawn. <laughs> set of all points equidistant from that point, right? Like a distance from here to here is one radius. Here to here is one radius. Anywhere you draw it, it's one radius away, right? So using that, and using our distance formula, which is x squared plus y squared is equal to the dis square root is equal to the distance, right? This is exactly how a circle is made. See, x squared plus y squared is equal to a set distance. The set distance radius, square both sides. x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. Boom, circle. However, this circle has the radius r, but we can't control where its center is. One, but we can change the center using our remember functions. That if you have fx and you have fx minus two, you would just moved it two to the right. So if it's a translation of plus two in the x direction, not plus two x, plus two in the x direction. Remember functions, transformations. We're going to apply that here to move the center of our circle around. Boom gives us the formula x minus a squared plus x minus b whole squared y minus b whole squared equals radius squared where not gonna lie, this is actually the first time i've seen the derivation of the circle and it makes so much sense <laughs> oh yeah right it's awesome it's like it's like circle whoa yeah it makes sense <laughs> and you see here a is You've basically moved it eight units in the positive direction, but minus you have to make it minus, right? Remember, if it's minus a, the center is a. Just remember this: it's always the sign is flipped, and the radius is always squared in this form. Mosquito. Okay. And here you can see this is the circle with radius center a b moved by however much. And now we can expand the brackets to get uh, a bit more complicated equation. x squared minus 2ax plus a squared equals y squared minus 2by plus b squared equals r squared. And we're, you know questioners, examiners, whatever, they like to give stuff like this. And you have to put it back into normal form. So I'm going to put the x's here. And the y's here. Oh no, why did I put an equal sign there? It's a plus. Um, minus 2by. I'm going to put the a squared here, the b squared here, and the minus r squared here equals 0. See, this all is a constant term. This is constant c. And these terms, I'll change color just for a second. These terms here have y in them. These terms have x in them. And these terms are constant. So, uh, you know, people like to write x squared minus 2ax, y squared minus 2by, and then the constant term c, which is equal to a squared plus b squared minus r squared. That's not really needed. It just, you need to be able to, when you're given a form like this, you need to turn it into a circle form. Why? Oh my gosh, my pen disappeared. Why? Because, well, in the circle form, remember, you have the a b coordinate center and the radius so that's information you can only get in the full circle form so let's see how to put it into circle form think about it <laughs> so you see put the x together the y together and we're going we're going to complete the square remember that it's been like a few topics since we did that Whoa. This comes up everywhere, completing the square. We will never get rid of it. So how do we complete square here? Well, half 4 plus 2, and it's whole square, and you minus 2 square. Just like that. Same for y. y plus 1, whole square, minus 1 square. And you keep that minus 1 equals 0. Simplify everything out, right? Minus 2, minus 4, minus 1, minus 1. So minus 4, minus 1, minus 1. Minus six, henceforth, x squared. Oh my gosh, no, no. 
x plus 2 squared plus y plus 1 well squared minus 6 equals 0. Fix that into Yeah, there's a lot of algebraic writing going on here. And remember, you might be tempted into thinking 6 is the radius, but no. 6 is not the radius. This is radius squared, so radius is actually root 6. And what's the center of this circle? That's a, Center is, so it's 2, so it's minus 2. Remember, minus whatever value is here. Minus 2, minus 1 is the center of this circle. Awesome. So now that we know basic stuff about some circles, the examiner's favorite question in circle geometry, maybe even the whole exam, oh my gosh, they give this in every exam, is when you're given a circle and you're asked for either a tangent to that circle, oh, that's a bad tangent, the tangent, you missed it. Tangent, remember, oh, yeah, tangents are hard to draw, guys. Um, what am I doing? The tangent has to cross at exactly one point like that. See, one solution. And it might be, find the set of all solutions for where it crosses twice, or where it doesn't cross, or it crosses just once. So remember stuff about crossing, about where you have a quadratic thing, curve, and a value is crossing it. That's recording. Um, then you need then you need to use the discriminant b squared minus 4ac and which we can do in this case so I'll show you how to do that here let's say you're given the circle and you're given a point on that circle okay, I'm just going to clear this circle here you're given this point right? find the tangent at that point let's say there's, they're saying to find that tangent at that point how do we do that First, you need the gradient of the line connecting this center, name it C, and your point. Why? Hey, 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 look at this. You see, any point, take any point on the surface of a circle, draw a gradient, I mean, draw a tangent, and if you draw a line to the center, it's always perpendicular. Any line at the surface, it's always perpendicular to a line connecting the center. It's just a circle property, you'll know. So the tangent will be tangent will be perpendicular to the line joining center. What is this one called? You might think there's a specific term for it. you call it the normal. In science or maths, normal usually means ninety degrees. So the normal to the tangent crosses through the center. We would say. Henceforth, using the gradient of the normal gradient. We can say that the gradient of the tangent is perpendicular, or one over minus one over m, perpendicular. And you, we have the gradient, we have the point already given. Henceforth, we can find the line. So here's this question. Let's do it real quick. Point A, blah, 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 lies on circle, blah, blah, blah. Find the equation of the tangent to the circle at that point. How so? First, let's see the center of the circle. Minus 1, minus 2. So it's 1, 2. Center. It's already in the form we need. So now let's get the gradient. The gradient of the point joining the center to a 5. So the normal. You see, in this diagram, it, um, we can use the gradient formula. 2 minus 5 over 1 minus 2 minus 3 over minus 1 equals 3. So the gradient is 3. And that's the gradient of the normal, remember, the normal. I mean, the tangent, which is perpendicular. So what's... Uh, I'm going to put minus 3 over 1. That's the perpendicular one. So that's the gradient we need. So now we have the gradient, we have the point, use our equation, y equals mx plus c. So I'm going to substitute in y, x, and m to get c. 
very simply, 5 equals minus 1 third x is 2 times times 2 plus c. So c equals 5 plus 2 thirds, which is also equal to 5 plus 2 thirds. So our equation would be y is equal to minus a third of x. That's the gradient. And the y-intercept is 17 over 3. That's the equation of a line, which is a grade tangent to this circle at the point A. You can check in Desmos. It, it looks nice. And there's another kind of grid derivation, which takes a little bit more algebra. And this is when you're given a line, you're given a circle, but from the line, not included. The gradient is not included. So you need to find the possible gradients M values, possible gradient values, which make it a tangent or not. So first we need to form a simultaneous equation using, so with that, I it looks really cool in Desmos because you can like have a line and you can just like shift the gradient along. But that, I can't do that here. So if you change the values of M, the line would like rotate, like woo. And if it's just like, yeah, rotate and it would cross the circle at different points. So there's usually two values at which a line passing through point, you know, y-intercept, might this gradient or this gradient, tangent, two tangents. So anyway, if you first have to make a simultaneous equation and then get the discriminant, which is algebraically very heavy. To show you what I mean, um, this line, a tangent to this circle for what values of m? First, simultaneous equation. Since we know that y equals mx plus 2, we're going to put y, it, we're substitute y. So that gives us x minus 8 whole square plus, instead of y, we're going to put mx plus 2 minus 1 whole square equals 5 square. And then we have to simplify everything. Then open all the brackets, <laughs> all the brackets, mind you. So that comes to x squared minus 16. Yeah, 16 x plus 64 um, plus m squared x squared plus 2mx plus 1 equals 25. This is one of the nicer equations, honestly. So now we're going to make it a quadratic equals 0, right? We're going to bring the 25 over. It's 25 plus 1. I'm going to make the x squareds together. x squared plus m squared x squared minus 16x. Minus, these are x values. Minus 16x. 2mx. And I'm going to put 64 with the constants. So now I'm going to put 1 plus m squared, x squared. So a plus 2m minus 16, x plus constants. We can just simplify 64 minus 25 plus 1, 40. 40 equals 0. Now you can't solve this. Because there's no, you know, so what you need to do is you need to get the discriminant. So the value of A, value of B, value of C, get the discriminant. B squared minus 4AC, hence 2M minus 16 whole square minus 4 times 1 plus M squared times C plus 40. Simplified 4M squared. Um, 2 times 16 times 2. It's like 64, I think. Six, my, 64m plus 16 squared. Oh my gosh, 256 minus... Wow. 
4 times 40 is 160. Minus 160 minus 160. M squared equals zero. zero. Equals zero because remember, discriminant equals zero means tangent. One solution, one repeated root. So if you um, you know factorize this or quadratically solve this somehow, one hundred sixty minus four, one fifty six m squared. Um, minus sixty four m plus two hundred fifty six. Uh, by the way, there is a minus sign in the one fifty six. 156. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 96 equals zero. Solve that using method of choice. I made this up question up randomly, so it might not have solutions or very nice solutions at least. Okay, it has um, disagreeable solutions. So the values of m are minus 8 plus minus. 10 square root 10 over 39, which is like 0 0.60 and minus 1.01. So you see, um, you can do this. And this is like the examiner's favorite style of question. They might ask you, instead of the tangent equals zero, they might ask you for what values of x for what values of this constant does it have two solutions? So it's greater than zero. Or does it have no solutions? Is it less than zero? So this is an examiner favorite, and you have to practice this. So let's now get into our last few questions on circles. OK, Vyomish, can you guide us through this first question here? Sure. So um, it says that the point A, B have the coordinates as follows. Uh, find the equation of the circle with center A which passes through B. OK. Um, so if we're saying that it has a center A and it passes through B, what we're basically saying is that AB is the radius of the circle, right? So first of all, to calculate the radius, we have to find the distance between A and B. So using the distance formula, it's just going to be um, 5 minus 10 squared uh, plus 2 minus minus one, which is two plus one square. It's root, should be the distance. That, uh, and that would be equal to five minus 10, that's five, negative five square. So that would be 25, 25 uh, plus nine, which is 34 and root that, yeah, exactly. And so now we've gotten the radius, right? So we could say that the radius square is basically 34. Simple as that. And now mm -hmm. um, looking back on the formula for the circle, it's going to be x minus the, the center is a. So an x minus a plus uh, y minus b squared equals to r squared. So uh, the a is going to be replaced with uh, 5. So it's going to be x minus 5. Mm -hmm. square and then b is going to be replaced by 2 which is going to be y minus 2 square and then mm -hmm. r square is equal to 34 that's already given awesome and that yeah. is indeed wait what oh yeah, yeah this is it's yeah great. yeah <laughs> this is for another question <laughs> yeah here we go yeah alternative method Oh, that's an alternative method. Oh, okay. This, okay, this is a different, same formula, different form, like same value, mm. but they didn't put it in a completed square. You see. I was also scared for a second, like, oh, how did like, you get that wrong? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So radius 34, center, and full thing. Okay. I'm going to do this one because I saw this question and I, th I thought it was cool. Like, there's a lot of cool circle questions, guys. You should go out and do fast papers. Um, the diagram shows this equation, la la la. So let's just say the information that we know. Radius is square root of 8. And the center is at point 2, 0. Here, 
two zero and find the chord of chord remember from your circle geometry stuff what a chord means it's a line which encloses a segment this is a segment this is a sector pi like a little slice of pi okay find by calculation coordinates of a and b the so what's here this here x is zero x is zero so what will y be <laughs> so this is actually awesome because you can put this look x is equal to zero right x is zero so we're going to put that into the equation zero minus two whole square plus y square equals eight and we can get the value of y very easily four square no no not square two square plus y square equals eight so four plus y square equals eight y square equals um four so y could equal plus minus two plus minus two but in this case since you know it could equal plus plus two or minus two you see two values how where did it go there you go <laughs> okay so it is indeed plus two because we're shown that and if this y is plus two we only know coordinates of a a is equal to x is zero y is two so we know that the y here is two right y is two and it says it's parallel to the x-axis so we can assume that this is flat and this has the same you know same y value so if in b y equals 2 what does x equal let's find out by putting it put it in y x minus 2 whole square plus y equals 2 2 square equals 8 so 4 equals x minus 2 whole square so x minus 2 equals plus minus 2 and x equals 2 plus minus 2 plus minus 2 and it, it so that what that means is the y could be y could be here right or the y could be here which is actually awesome because this gives us values of x equals 0 and x equals 4 so indeed look at x equals 0 it's y equals 2 and x equals 4 it's also y equals 2 so our final answer i'm gonna change color for this final answer would be coordinate of a is zero two coordinate of b is zero no uh where'd it go stop doing that coordinate of b and change colors <laughs> coordinate of b is four two okay so let me actually try to do this question uh, it shows that the equation of the circle is as follows. Find the coordinates of the center of the circle and the radius, and hence find the coordinates of the lowest point of the circle. So mm -hmm. this is what we did before. Remember, we have to convert it into the circle formula. So um, we're just going to write, yeah, like in that form to make it easier. Uh, then what we do is that, okay, um, x squared plus 6x, right? I could write that as x plus three square minus nine. Yeah, let's skip that. Right. And then for that, uh, for the Y, it's going to be, that's a two, right? Oh yeah, a, a Y two. minus one square uh, minus one. And then minus 26 equals to zero. So then we get the numbers and then we simplify it. So it'd be minus nine, minus one, minus 26. That'd be equal to minus 36. And so it'd be X plus three square plus Y minus one square. And then it's gonna be equal to 36. So in this case, uh, or we could write a six square. So in this case, the radius is gonna be six. And the center, it's going to be minus 3 plus uh, minus 3 comma 1. 
there we go. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about hence find the coordinates of the lowest point on a circle, right? If we're talking about the lowest point on the circle, if you look at a circle, right, the lowest point, it's going to be on the with the x value of the center, right? So um, what we have to do is that we already have gotten the center, right? The x value of the center is minus 3. So we put that minus 3 into the circle equation, and then we get two values of y. And so either of them would determine the lowest point on the circle. And so if we look at uh, minus 3, let's put that in there. So min if we put minus 3 in the circle equation, it would be x minus 3 plus 3, which is 0, square, uh, plus y minus 1 square, equals to 36. So it's, it's going to cancel out the minus 3 plus 3. So it's going to be y squared minus, oh, yeah, we could also do that, yeah y minus 1 square equals to uh, 36, and y minus 1 equals to plus minus 6. And so y equals to uh, plus minus 6 plus 1. So if we're talking about the lowest point on the circle, right, it's going to be minus, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, 1 minus 6. So it's going to be minus 5. And so the lowest point would be with the x value of minus 3 and the y value of minus 5. Minus 3, minus 5. Wait, uh, I think it's incorrect. I'm sure it's it just it's just 6 below Oh, wait, here, oh, wait so. never mind. Okay, that, that makes sense. That, this is correct. This is correct. Yes, Bye -bye. 6 below the circle. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah, we could have also done it like this. The other method of doing it would have been way simpler. Just <laughs> to take the radius. We know the radius is 6, right? So it's just going to be 6 units below the center. <laughs> yeah, I completely forgot about that. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. What, why did and this now okay. if we look at question number B, right? Find the set values of, con of the constant k for which the line with the equation uh, y equals to kx minus 5 intersects the circle at two distinct points. Look at if that. If we're talking about... Yeah, it's a, it's a big question. We already know by looking at the uh, marks. So um, let's rewrite the equation of the circle. So that would be x um, plus 3 square plus y minus 1 square equals to 36. Right, and so um, again, we're gonna use substitution because these are two simultaneous equations, right? If we're talking about the intersection, so y equals to kx minus five would go inside the equation of the circle, so it'd be x plus three square uh, plus uh, kx minus six square equals to thirty-six. Then we expand this, it will be k, uh, x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals to k squared x minus 12kx plus 36 equals to 36. That means you're going to cross out 36s. Yeah. And so if we uh, put like terms together, it's just going to be 1 plus k squared. And then in brackets, uh, x squared. Plus, uh, then it's going to be uh, 6 minus 12k, brackets, uh, x. And it's just going to be plus 9 equals to 0. So we've gotten the values of a, b, and c in this case. Nice. And so if we're talking about that, this, uh, the line intersects the circle at two distinct points, right? We're saying that the discriminant of this uh, quadratic is going to be more than zero. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that would give us, uh, let's just solve that. So it's going to be 6 minus 12k squared. Minus 4 times... 1 plus k square um, 
times 9, yeah. So when we simplify this, it's just going to be uh, 6 minus 12k squared would turn into 36. 6 times 12, that's 72. Minus 144k plus 144k squared. I think that should be it. Wait, let me just check. Yeah, I think so. that's oh. correct. 6 times 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. 72, yeah. And then on the uh, and then it'll be minus um, four times nine is equal to thirty six, so it's going to be minus thirty six minus thirty six k square. It uh, should be more than zero. Mm -hmm. So now we've got a quadratic inequality that we can solve. So uh, it'll be one four four minus thirty six. Can you calculate that? One four four minus thirty six. It's 108. 112? One, 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 oh, wait. Oh, 108. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. 108k square. Uh, then it would be minus 144k. Should be more than zero because the 36 and 36 cancel out. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is that we can, um, again, how do we uh, solve inequalities? Let's assume that it's equal for right now to find the point at which it is equal to zero. So uh, it'd be, we could take the K outside. True. So it's just gonna be like that. So the two points where it would be equal to zero is when K is equal to zero or um, K equals to 144 divided by 108. Uh, can Let's you go. simplify that? Four by three. I should have brought my calculator with myself. <laughs> but yeah, k equals to four upon three. And if we look at the quadratic equation, right, 108k squared minus 144k, it's a u-shaped one because the co uh, coefficient of k squared is positive. So if we're saying that it uh, touches the x-axis, right, at points... Um, where uh, at k equals to 0 and k equals to 4 upon 3, right? We're seeing that if we want uh, the value of um, uh, k to be more than this, right? So we have to say that it's either k is less than 0 or k is more than 4 upon 3. So those are the two inequalities that we would get. So our answers are k is either less than 0 less than zero or k, or k is, is more than 4.3 three there we go so let's check the answers and it B. is correct we did the six mark question let's go awesome <laughs> so lowest point is that we did that by getting the radius center and that form it uh yeah we put it in the simultaneous did a bunch of working out um, got the discriminant, got the values of k, and then we presented the final equality. Awesome. Great. There were a few more questions, but due to some time constraints, uh, we could not do them, but I will, if possible, I'll put, we can put them in the description, like just the paper numbers and stuff. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So yeah, thank you all for tuning in in this long lecture. It was quite a long topic, not gonna lie. And so, yeah, we hope that you enjoyed and had a great understanding of the concept. You can get hold of the notes on the Zenotes website. Our social media handles are on display. So connect with us and feel free to drop in any kind of questions you have. Yeah. Thank you all for joining in. Thank you.